Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of Earwig and the Witch. Earwig is a 2020 Japanese animated film from the famed studio Ghibli that follows an orphan who one day gets adopted against her will. And once she arrives at her new home, she learns that her new foster mother is a witch. And in the process, finds ways to conjure up and learn her own magical ways. Studio Ghibli is now trying their hand at 3D animation. Yes, this is the first 3D animated film to come out of the studio. Yes, this is the first full-length 3D animation to come from the studio. This time from animation legend Hayao Miyazaki's son, Goro Miyazaki. Now, Goro has done a couple of feature-length films previous to Earwig and the Witch, though I have not seen them, so I was curious to see his son's work here. Plus, we're getting a 3D animated film from Studio Ghibli, which instantly piqued my interest as well. And of course, it had to do with the witchy magics, which always seems to be a fun time in anime. Unfortunately, this film just doesn't work. Yeah. So, let's go ahead and talk about the positives first. Well, there are definitely aspects of the film that are fun. The idea behind this little girl learning these magic spells from a kind of grumpy older witch is a fun idea. Not novel, certainly, and one we've seen done through the studio before. The little cat, Thomas, is adorable, and I would say the animation is halfway a positive, halfway a negative. Why I say that is because just looking at the animation on random stills or the designs themselves, it is beautiful. It's vibrant. It's colorful. We have some nice textures, like there's a leather jacket in here that I thought looked great. But just looking at things, it looks really pretty. There's other ideas that work well, like this idea of a rock band full of witches and warlock spirits. And it's short. It's not even 90 minutes, so you can get it over quickly. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's about all I have for positives, because this film was just a disappointment across the board. So let's go ahead and talk about the negatives, starting off with the animation yet again. While everything looks good when it is just a still frame, unfortunately, it falls into the trap of so many other low-budget animated films. The rendering, the processing, it needed a few more times worked through the system because the way they move, the fluidity just isn't there. So the pretty moments are interrupted with dodgy animation fluidity that really takes away from the film itself. And it's a shame because when you go into an an when you go into a Studio Ghibli film, if nothing else works, you know at the very least you're going to get a stunning, beautifully hand drawn 2D animated, gorgeous film. And they took that away from this project. We didn't even have the basis of what makes a Studio Ghibli film a magical experience. And in saying that. All of those things that I talked about, the ideas that were fun or good in the positives, are just not dealt with at all, are just dealt with in really poor fashion. Earwig as a character is cute and has likable traits to her, but her entire motivation of the film is very strange and it leads her on a weird path that leads her down a weird path mindset of a path. No lesson involved, no learning tools are handled through that. And it's not even really a coming of age film because in honesty, when it comes to her as a little girl, she ends up pretty much in the exact same place that she starts at when it comes to mindset and thought process. So she doesn't really evolve or grow as a character. 
The witch is kind of entertaining to begin, but her shtick gets old. She repeats the same lines over and over. And they do this weird thing with the animation when these characters get mad, their eye pupils get so tiny and start going all over the place. And with the witch, particularly, it was horrible. Thomas the Cat is adorable, but he doesn't really serve a great purpose. None of the mythology or the lore is explored at all. Particularly with the Mandrake, I didn't really understand any of that. What was going on with the mythology of his character. The band, that awesome witch band that I talked about, is pointless. It is literally pointless in the film. <laughs> the hijinks that she gets into aren't really fun. Most of the inside animation just looks gross and I was just like geeked out watching the film. The ending is so rushed and patchwork together it was actually quite alarming. The final act of this film makes no sense and <laughs> sent you on a whirlwind to get to that final destination which isn't really satisfying either. And unfortunately, following that ending, I just sat there and really wondered what actually was the point of this film. There's no lesson in here. There's no real growth or movement for our characters. There's nothing for kids to learn from. There's not a coming of age story. What is, what do you get out of Earwig and the Witch? And ultimately I could think of literally nothing. I got nothing out of this film and I struggled to really even justify its existence and that's why it's such a disappointment. I love Studio Ghibli. I love the output they have. They're beautiful 2D animated films that are filled to the brim with lore and these wonderful creative stories. So to see this cheap version with this really watered down story that doesn't explore any lore, doesn't give you any of that magical fantasy that the studio is known for, the punchy fun dialogue, all of that is gone. And for a film that is centered around music, yeah, the earwig song that they introduce is good, but the original score is horrible. It's really actually ugly. The film is ugly, it's devoid of charm, and as I just said, ultimately it turns out to be pretty much pointless. So ultimately, Earwig and the Witch will be debuting on HBO Max February 5th and in select theaters starting February 3rd. And I guess if you have HBO Max already and do enjoy anime at large, you're probably going to give this a watch just because it's the latest Ghibli film. But throw any and all expectation you may have had for this film out the window and set the bar as low as you can. Otherwise, if you don't have HBO Max and we're interested, don't bother. This is not worth risking anything to go see this in a theater. It's also not worth an HBO Max subscription. And honestly, even for Ghibli and animation fans, recommending this, even if you have the subscription, is a little bit difficult because it doesn't really justify the time you'll spend watching it. So watch Earwig and the Witch at your own risk. So that was my review of Earwig and the Witch. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, click like down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on my latest videos. Also, join in on the discussion. Are you excited to see Earwig and the Witch? And what is your favorite Studio Ghibli film? Let me know either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Mwah! Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!